Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. They've outgrown their age of rebellion, dull the Empire's edge. Defeated Imperial generals and the Pirate Queen's dredge. They've been soldiers and scoundrels, what's there left to be? How about Las Acolytes looking for their Force and destiny? There's a seer, hermit, investigator, and teacher better watch your back. A reviver ring's gonna reach you. Will this team find the light or will darkness win the day? Find out with the heroes of the hardy and wave. Previously on Heroes of the Hydean Way, four galactic wanderers were drawn together by the Force and sent on a cosmic tour with gifted guides until a ship crashed nearby. Unable to save the crew, they began a quest to gather missing kyber crystals from Jedi Soulja War Talacron to keep them out of the wrong hands. Their first stop was Quilos, a city on Arboween under the thrall of Ward's former student. Once they helped the Sathari take their freedom and pulled a darkened soul from the shadows, they pressed on to their next destination with only the hyperspace jump to rest. Will it be enough? Find out this week as the heroes are on the move again. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a Star Wars actual play podcast and we're playing in Fantasy Flight Games Force and Destiny system using the Chronicles of the Gatekeeper adventure developed by Tim Cox and Max Brook. This is Act 2, Prelude Episode 1. And I'm Ben, the GM for this adventure. Hyperspace. It's cold. It's endless. It has that swirly blue thing going on. Makes me think about melancholy. I'm Koba. The Doug Sentinel Investigator. Got a lot of regrets, a lot of things that come up in the quiet, cold trip through hyperspace. Hey, Hillary, what does hyperspace make you think of? Well, I've spent a lot of time in hyperspace, if I'm completely honest. We've done a lot of traveling. Is it despair? No, not not often. Uh, not often. Although, when the, the kids were practicing new new songs, sometimes it got a little uncomfortable. For the most part, though, when you can sit in the cockpit and lock the doors behind you and have nothing but the open space and blue swirly thing in front of you. It's very peaceful. It gives you time to contemplate. And, well, we'll leave it there. But I am Hillary, counselor teacher. Also, I'm an Alina, but, you know, who cares? Nap time. Hyperspace, perfect nap time. Best time to catch up on your sleep before you inevitably arrive at your destination and the shooting starts again. I'm Kesh, the Trindoshan Mystic Seer. And uh, Skip, what do you think about hyperspace? Hmm. I guess it probably reminds me of all the times that I, I took this sort of side job. Uh, ferrying things around, and I spent a lot of time just by myself, you know, going through hyperspace, long periods of time, and I would get kind of tired, but I was by myself, so you didn't want to fall asleep. So what I used to do is just spin in a circle really, 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 really fast and for a really long time, and then all those blue circles kind of ended up behind your eyeballs, and it was really intense. Uh, and then you kind of got a little sick to your stomach, and you couldn't fall asleep then, so you, you made it. Uh-huh. Why wouldn't you want to fall asleep? Because you don't want to crash into anything or anything. But, but there's there's fail safes and alarms so and nav computers for. That's what it was a really alarms are for. cheap vessel. <laughs> I don't think you understand. Um, oh, anyway. I've been on a lot of cheap vessels before. Still, always been able to fall asleep. You must have magical nav powers. I believe it. I also probably should mention that I'm a Calarian Seeker Hermit and Hillary. I think it does matter that you're an Alina. I think it's pretty neat. Well, thank you, Skip. I think you're pretty neat, too. And you, Gudge. Don't want to forget you. To learn more about our heroes, we get one to ask another question. And it is now Koba's turn. <laughs> hey, Kesh. Yeah, Koba. 
you know, something's been uh, bothering me for a while. <sighs> okay, okay, I'm I'm ready for a long story. What's been bothering you, Koba? It may surprise you to know that I actually haven't known a lot of Trandoshans in my time. Sure, we've crossed paths here and there. I've shot a few. I've been shot at by a few. We never really became associates. Th this, this is the tail question, isn't it? I was curious if you ever wish you had a tail, yeah. Okay. <laughs> or like, what's the deal? Do they like, do you stuff it in your cloak? Do Trandoshans talk about I could have sworn original series Trandoshans had tails. <laughs> uh, original series? <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh, but you know, you know we're not supposed to acknowledge that. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, T tails have a pretty cool aesthetic. If I was born with one, I think I would have uh, would've been very happy to have it. I don't think it would have gotten in the way all that much. You know, aided in balance. Sometimes uh, we Trandoshans can be, you know, a little little Ford heavy, but uh, yeah, we we don't really have them in the same way. I've I've known a few Barabels though, and uh, they seem to get on fine. Although it is, a, I guess, another valid weak point. But then again, you could always wear tail armor. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it would. Yeah. But you could like put some kind of. Maybe a little shock glove on the tail or something. Could do some kind of tail whip attack. What? That actually, that's that idea has merit. Wonder if any anyone has ever done that before. I don't know, but if if they have, they have to be a real unstoppable force, a real a uh, real cunning individual. Almost certainly, a hero to say the least. I wouldn't go that far. I don't know. I might. All right. So, Destiny Pool? Oh, uh, yeah. It's been a while since we've done a normal I episode. I forgot to do that. <laughs> uh, oh, just golly. make sure All that right. you see whatever. Oh, that's appropriate. Too dark side for me. <coughs> right. Oh, no. Okay. All right, River Ren, Ren balances out some because our holy moly. our final yeah. destiny pool is two light side points and four dark side points. It's a good thing we probably don't have to fight anything tonight. <laughs> That's what you think. The camera is looking on the silvered shell, the Gothrak seven twenty freighter that now shines in the Arbuene light. The front hatch is down. And our four heroes were last seen boarding. The camera slowly settles down and goes up the landing ramp. We look around to see the cargo bays are still somewhat of a cluttered mess. There's a lot of stuff still in there. The crew cabins have been cleaned and are pretty well kept. The camera... Looks around, we see a Doug sort of snorting awake. As we go a bit deeper into the kitchen area, we see our wonderful Aline standing up, looking into the more isolated crew compartment. Kesh is snorting awake after seeming to have fallen asleep. The camera ends in the cockpit, as Skip gets a spasm through all their limbs, causing them to tense up for a second and wake up. And there on the dash of the silvered shell is the holocron of Soulja Ward that is glowing in a pulsing blue light. I didn't, I, I didn't fall asleep. Oh. Um. Hmm. Skip's gonna grab the box. I just kind of shake it a little bit. Just on account of, yeah, picking up the box, shaking it a bit. I'm really figuring that, okay, out of the bottom of the box, the hologram comes out, is acting like they're going through an earthquake as you shake it. <laughs> Hands out, sort of bent knees, looking around like, what, what? Um. 
How you doing? I am doing well. I have come across some information that I believe you and your companions would be interested in from the crystal that you and your companion were able to insert. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm not great at taking notes. I feel like I should grab... Yeah, hold on. Okay. And just gonna snatch the box, make sure that, uh, you know, the guy's facing upright and, and such. Uh... Start to walk out of the cockpit. Think better of it. Look back at the controls. Make sure that there aren't any alerts or anything. And then leave. Yeah, there are no alerts going on. Uh, yeah, the engines are at planetary idle. I feel like... Skip is gonna go towards where, where folks are sleeping. And uh, then there's this moment of... Kind of turning towards where Koba is sleeping. A little sort of intake of breath. Turn towards where Kesh is sleeping. Like, like it's very obvious they're trying to figure out which one is the one that should get this information. <laughs> uh... And then your eyes settle on Hillary, and clearly he's the most reasonable choice. <laughs> I'm also awake, so... Exactly. Where I was actually going to go with it. Okay. Um, and then here's the scuffling of Hillary and, and rushes in. Hey! Hmm? Uh, so? I think we have some news. Did you get an alert? I didn't hear any alarms. What well, well, different kind of news? Hey, you can talk now. Looking at the, the box. Uh, yes. Padawan I mean, Hillary. I mean, you always could talk before, but, I mean, you know. <laughs> well... You were unsure about your memory, so I wasn't wanting to uh, uh, become too boisterous for you. Yes. Memories and notes, you say. Should we perhaps wake our companions? I really think they're both sleeping right now, and it's probably a good idea if we let them both get enough sleep, because... I don't think we really want to deal with either of them when they're preggy. Oh, Cash is fine. It's fine. But uh, you make a valid point. We've had some some days. We might as well let them rest. Our dear friend of the box. <laughs> holocron. It, this is a holocron. Yes, but it's box-shaped. I mean, I just... You, you declined to be called Soldier Ward, but calling you... The memory of Soldier War is just so bleh. Mm. It has no panache. You said you had news, Skip, and then you presented our friend. So perhaps you have news? Well, I think it's more that, that he has news, and I did not want to be the sole bearer of the news. Yes, I was able to recover some of Soldier Ward's actions from before he left Arbuin that he had received a message from a Jedi Master uh, Windu that Knight Ward was to depart for Jorah on Katonamodia, and that Knight Ward was expecting to be a few weeks on Jorah and then be able to return, that there was some form of negotiations that were directed to happen, and it was Ward's talents that recommended him for it. So I was right. He didn't mean to abandon Markov forever. I feel that that is likely small comforts uh, for past wounds, but it is nice to know. It has been confusing learning these new pieces of information from the crystal. When I was found and activated... I knew everything that I knew, and I knew that it was all from Night Ward. Well, now learning this, it isn't the same. It is not a internal memory, but an external one. Like I'm watching a hollow recording of something. It is somewhat confusing. Change usually is. I would say you get used to it, but um, 
I've never lived in a tiny box and been a hologram <laughs> of some other person. So, we shall help you as best we can. So it's kind of like, you're Ward, but you're not really Ward. But now, you've got some more pieces that make you more really Ward, and it's really weird. Hey, that's kind of kind of like poetry. Almost like it's, I'm moving further from the true Ward, and being a reflection of Ward when he started. It is blindingly confusing. Yes, that that would be life. Life is, at best, wonderful, at worst, not, but at all times, blindingly confusing. How true. Skip, you, you know how to pilot this thing, right? I mean, I have been. But, <laughs> like, our friend here says, Catonomoidia? Yes, that is the planet and the city that we should be wanting is Jora. Jora. Yes. Catonomoidia. Well, I've never been there myself, but I'm sure it will be an experience. If what I understand of your previous uh, employ was, a trip to Catonomoidia would do your troop wonders. Oh, really? It was a bustling place, the last that I had heard. All right, so, Hillary, you know, um, back on the Mushroom Planet, right? Where we yes. had that kind of, like, brainwave that was all, like, the same brainwave, and it was really strange. Um, yes. And we saw a bunch of places. One of them was that cat place. That's what uh, Shax and Scoop said. Cat place. Cat, cats and nematodes. <laughs> see, I see. Yeah, the, 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 the thing that, that he just said. Jora. Catonomoidia. That one, yep. Yes, it's a, it's a planet, and I believe we should probably go there. If you wish to prepare the ship and all the navicomputer stuff, I will wake the others. It's the place with the bridges. The place with the... Oh, yes. Remember I said I really wanted to climb up to the top because it looked really uh, neat. Well, we're on a ship. Perhaps you could start at the top. That's a really good point. Thank you. Is there aught else you should be telling us, our friend and mentor? At this point, that is all that I have learned. I have recovered more notes on force techniques that Night Ward was familiar with. But beyond his travels, no, I have not found anything that goes past his time on Catonomoidia. Well, this is great, because you are having sort of, you know, kind of like an identity crisis a little bit. So, you know what? Since we've had to keep you in the box for so long when we were on the bird planet, why don't I go get uh, the ship all ready to, to take a slightly longer distance, and then we'll we'll keep you out of the box for a while, and I'll I'll take you around, and you can get to know all of us a little bit better, and didn't think any further than that. But yeah. That would be lovely, Padawan Skip. All right, then Skip is going to very excitedly go back to the cockpit and, you know, check all the mechanical stuff. Are you going to take him with now? Uh, I guess that makes sense, yeah. Just keep talking. <laughs> you got a friend. That's nice. I am thinking that we should follow Hillary as Hillary wakes up the other two. Light yammering in the background as as Skip wanders <laughs> away, talking about this is Gudge and my favorite color is this. And... Something along that lines, yeah. <laughs> I just like you chattering with your friend in a box. Captive audience. <laughs> I have a quick question before I wake folks up. Koba. Mm-hmm. You sleep with a vibra ring under your pillow? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's probably his gun. Okay, not not very comforting anyway. So we're gonna wake. Co is Koba asleep like on the couch or in a in a cabin? There's a cargo bay on this thing, right? Yep. Yeah, two actually. Is there stuff Are in you... the cargo bay? Yeah. Yeah, there's a 
several crates, a few display cases of weapons and whatnot. The way that they had left it before you found the ship was like it had been tossed because they were searching for a holocron, but there was still crates of antiques there and it's still a antiquities smuggler's hold. Koba has strung a hammock up atop whatever the tallest stack of like crates is (laughs) (laughs) so that he has some altitude. (laughs) Knowing Koba sleeps lightly, Hillary will position himself He'll walk in, kind of eyeball where you are, and then position himself behind something slightly and rap very loudly on a metal surface and say, Koba! Koba jolts awake and uh, true to form has his revolver in one hand, but not strictly pointed towards the sound. He uh, looks around groggily. Oh, Hillary. Hello. What? Uh, I felt it would be prudent to alert to the fact that we are going to be departing soon. Our friend, the uh, Holocron, has given us a new destination where Soldier Ward went. Great. Seems, seems he got the information from that new crystal. So where are we headed? Jaro on Katum- Katonomoidia. This guy likes bridge cities. All right. Wanted you to be prepared before we, you know, take off, leap into hyperspace, and you fall out of your hammock, and then you overreact, and you shoot things. You know. Not that trigger happy. For this, I'm grateful. Thank you for not shooting me when I woke you up. (laughs) Koba starts climbing down from his hammock. I'm going to get cash. Uh, I do have some freshly made tea in the cabin, or in the, in the kitchen, if you are interested. And I found a box of snack cakes. Are they like ancient snack cakes? They're not antiques, but they're pretty past due. Mm. They're pear flavored. Little jammy bits in the middle. I'm not sure if you're trying to sell me on them or not. To be fair, I'm not either. But (laughs) in your own time, I wanted you to know they were an option. Thanks. Gonna go get cash. And once we're off the ground, I suspect we'll have another meeting. And figure out what is going on. If ever. He's gonna poodle off. Whereabouts would you find Kesh's sleeping arrangements? Unlike apparently everybody else, Kesh has claimed one of the crew quarters. <laughs> no, I totally have too. I was just puttering. Okay. And as uh, as Hillary is, is approaching, you can see on like the, the thermostat outside, it looks like the temperature has been turned way up inside. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, since you have a door and it is closed and you have traveled with Hillary a bit, Hillary's not going to open the door, but rather wrap in a, like a little, you know, shave and a haircut kind of way, a little tattoo of familiarity. That's also probably really obnoxious. Okay. But at the same time, easily identified as something Hillary does to you. You go on like that for about 20 seconds of just annoyance and things like that <laughs> before. Dang, it, I don't have fine manipulation. I can't just force this open <laughs> <laughs> uh, before you'll you'll hear kind of a loud groan and then the sound of like claws on metal deck uh, before the the door opens up and. Cash blinks and stares way down at Hillary. <laughs> He's standing, staring right up at your face, beaming obnoxiously. Two things. <laughs> There's tea and snack cakes. They're old, yes. Okay, that um, would be two things. 
No, that's one thing. Joined by a conjunction. Don't get ahead of the game. Mm. Also, we're going to Katsunomoidia. Apparently. Why? A friend in the box got new information from the crystal about Soldier Ward going to Katonomoidia, a planet that I've never been to, as well as to the city of Jaro on said planet. Also some meditation skills, force powers. I don't really know something that Soldier Ward was good at. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to take the box from uh, Skip for a little while. That might be considered a bit of a blessing, because I feel as though Skip has not stopped talking to it, possibly even to breathe, for the past several minutes. Mm. But at the same time, maybe it's nice being out of the box. Uh, maybe. Uh, but yeah, so if the, the holocron says that's where Ward went, then that's where our our quest will take us. One step closer to resolution, I guess. Who knows? I don't. Yes. Uh, um. Hey, Hillary. Yes. How many credits do you have on you? Mine. My my credits specifically. I'm just. Well, we're not going to be landing in a jungle. Where we're going, I got a feeling we're going to be dealing with a few um, fees when we arrive. This is true. That is a very valid point. Well made. I have none. However, uh, the bunk I have chosen has a puffer piggy bank that we might be able to rattle a few out of. (laughs) Puffer piggy bank. That's adorable. (laughs) 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 And uh, and Cash is going to grab up her. uh, her staff and uh, start to hobble her way out of her quarters. Skip has our friend in the box in the uh, in the cockpit. I'll I'll go retrieve him before. Uh, well, that way Skip can maybe focus on the flying. I mean, it's taking off from a jungle planet. There's not a huge amount of things to run into. I mean, on the sure, other side, there's, there's so many aside dark side points. Huge trees. I mean, there is, but also... Watch out for that safari! (laughs) I'm much more thinking of taking off. There might be a safari who's gliding along beside the ship for a little bit, but like taking off from the planet and getting out into at least space is pretty simple. Rolling a planet space to take off from a planet is sort of, how do you miss space? Skip takes off and... The ship itself is in pretty decent repair. It may be oldish, but it still is working. Skip is able to get up out of Arbuene's atmosphere, and I do want to get a two purple, yeah, a two purple astrogation check. Okay, it has been a long time since we rolled skill stuff. Huzzah! Skip rolls their. One yellow, one green against the two purples, and gets an ex- an excess. Yes, it's a, <laughs> a success and an advantage. So I, I like to think that Skip is in the cockpit, yammering away at Ward, and is really mostly focused on the conversation and just going through these motions, like hitting buttons and whatever, like like just getting. Getting off the planet is just not not even a big thing for Skip. Skip is way more interested and invested in the conversation. And it is just a non-event to get off the planet. That totally makes sense. For the advantage, is there anything in specific you want to do? Maybe make things go faster in hyperspace? Or other things? I mean, there was nothing that I really cared about all that much here or did anybody else have a strong opinion maybe the ship does have map information in it somewhere and so even though maybe i've never been there i know no generally all right yeah there'll be like a bit of a spacer's log it is a relatively major planet and it's not actually in the core but it's in the colonies region which is 
inside the inner rim. Well, that's neat. I was going to try to ask you how to get there, um, Ward, but uh, actually the ship already knows, so I can continue with my story. So that's when Gudge and I ended up on this sort of a swampy planet, and then there was this guy who was all like, I'm a chef and I want to eat all the frogs. And I was like, but that's really kind of mean because frogs are kind of like my really, really distant cousins. And, you know, they don't know any better and they're just really small. But this chef guy just kept really wanting to eat the frogs. Hi, hi Cash. What's up? Um, can I borrow Ward? What? She points a claw at the, uh, the box. <laughs> can I, uh, <clears throat> borrow him for a little while? Sure. I still have some questions for him, though, so if you could bring him back, uh, I'll just do some flying, and, uh, then maybe later. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. It, it'll just be for a little while. Actually, um, can I ask both of you something? Sure. Um, well, first off, oh, by the way, uh, we're going to Canto uh, Hillary has already updated me. Great. Uh, well, we're, uh, we're en route. Um, we put the uh, crystal into <laughs> the box and... I mean, I'm sure I don't want to talk over you, Mr. Ward, uh, but Mr. Ward is having a sort of, um, and kind of like puts their hand up to their mouth, having kind of like an identity thing. Um, so, uh, but since I've got you both and I haven't had you both for a little while, um, can I ask a question? Yes. Yes, Padawan. Oh, I still don't really know how I feel about that terminology. Um. So, the Force. That's not the question. Um, it, it's, uh, yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> is this about your gift? The one you manifested back at Markov's place? Not necessarily about me specifically. But, but yes, about Markov. Because I... So I sat down with Markov and I tried to get some information out of him but it didn't really kind of explain anything so okay um why does the force have to be light and dark why did why why does it have to be dark why does it have to be light and dark like why can't it be neutral <clears throat> why is everything just like good or bad i suspect ward and i will give you two very different answers to this. Well, uh, Ward, do you want to go first? It is the balance of being selfish and selfless. Those who move towards the light are engaging in being selfless in their actions which at times can seem very selfish as well. The act of protection versus revenge can be almost seen to be the exact same saber stroke. But the intent, the end of it, is two very different things. Okay, maybe our answers aren't going to be that different. I don't really see this as, well, in the Jedi sense. These are gifts we've been given. These are abilities we have that others don't. I don't buy into that light or dark nonsense, but Ward is right. Intention matters. How you use your gift matters. And it's not something to be used solely for your own benefit. All right. Th that's it? That's enough? Well, I have to think on it. Now, um, well, I have you here. Let me ask you a question. Orange. <laughs> 
duly noted. I'm kidding. It was a joke. Uh, anyway, yeah, question. The thing you did with the plants. Wasn't that wild? I didn't know I could do that. What did that feel like? How did you know you could do it? I didn't know I could. It just kind of happened, and then, and then I knew I could. Have you done so since? No. Well, unfortunately, we're in hyperspace now, so I don't think we're going to find any plants up here, but... See, I thought about going outside and messing with a tree, but then I was kind of really afraid that maybe it would get the attention of one of those bear sloths, and I didn't really want to have to uh, knock out another one of those, especially by myself, because I thought that maybe one of you would hear me and then shoot it or something. And so I, I just went inside. That's... I guess that makes a certain degree of sense. I'm going to see if I can find anything like that aboard. If I do, I think it's something you should practice before you're called on to do so again. It was just kind of like, you know, we needed we needed a wall. And then I made one. You know? Okay, so it was like creating it. You didn't like talk to the plants, tell them to grow. I don't think so. And if I did, it was way too fast for me to remember. Okay. Hmm. I don't think I can talk to plants. Well, I, <laughs> I'm trying to understand the nature of your gift. I've never seen or heard of anything like that before, but the instinctual response isn't isn't unusual for a first because manifestation, but it'll require work from here. How did you know that you could lift up Hillary? I had been capable of that for a little while. Nothing didn't start so um in such a life or death situation, but <clears throat> but I wanted to uh to bring something to me and so it did. The other things I've been able to do so far actually ward uh instructed me in the basics in route why I want to uh, bend his holographic ear, so to speak, again. I guess I guess I kind of do have another question. Go ahead. Do you think Hillary and Koba have gifts? I do. I know Hillary does. I have seen him use it. I don't know for sure that Koba does, but sometimes they're more subtle than levitation or plant control. Maybe something really big has to come and scare Koba, and then Koba will react and show what Koba can do. If I acknowledge that point, are you going to spend the rest of this trip trying to scare Koba? He's got a hammock. I think it'd be pretty easy to wake him up in a really scary way. Okay, do as you will. <clears throat> oh, I'm not suggesting I do that. I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. You're trying to convince me. Well, I'll, uh, I'll consider it. And Cash reaches out and she'll pick up uh, Ward's holocron, bringing it back to her. With your hand or your force? With my my hand. <laughs> As Cash picks up the holocron, she moves over to the cockpit door, pauses and turns back. Hey, uh, Skip. Mm -hmm. Thank you for um, <clears throat> knocking Markov out back there. Before I took things any farther. Skip is going to get a big smile. No, no problem. Cash, like, sets her jaw, nods, is fine with that being the end of the conversation, and uh, we'll leave. Slash wipe over to Hillary and Koba, sitting around having coffee or something along that lines, since we haven't spent much time with them. How many blasters do we have aboard? Somewhere between one and a half dozen. 
we at least have I mean, Cash at least came aboard with a blaster pistol. That's kind of what I was remembering. She hasn't used it at all, but she's she's had it, and I think pointed at at some people. There's there's probably at least a, a one or two more aboard, I would imagine. Given she used to be good with a blaster pistol, she used to be great with a blaster pistol. Now, uh, now not so much. There would be the personal one set. Okay, Cash has because. Skip has the air rifle, Koba has the revolver, and Hillary has their smile, which honestly really should terrify everyone. Ting! Too many teeth. Perfect. <laughs> perfect teeth. Yeah, too many perfect <laughs> teeth, yes. <laughs> You're looking at possum. There would be ones that either would have been the previous cruise effects, or there would also be some more unique kind in the stuff that they were hauling. In the captain's cabin, there might be a set of dueling pistols. The scene would open up with Hillary and Koba in the eating area with the slumped-in couch and the rest of the small kitchenette-style cooking area with the tea and the... They're not actually beyond expiration date. Like The other crew was like here for a while. They're, they're pushing the best-by date. They're not... You know, space rocks yet. Yeah, but what really is a best buy date? But yeah. A suggestion or guideline. They're Biscuit Baron stable cookies. Koba has been gathering all of the weaponry he can locate. All right. And is currently checking the ammo on the various blasters and stuff. So you have like a pile of guns. Sorry, blasters. It's probably not so much a pile as a as a row of blasters on the degeric table, side by side. I'm figuring there'd be at least one blaster rifle on there, plus a few pistols, several holdout blasters. You hear from an adjacent storage room, like a, a closet, you hear a, a horrible noise of metal on metal, and you look over to see Hillary pushing a really big metal trunk out of a corner, like... He's actually, you know, got his elbows on it and he's got it in that awkward position where he's pushing it. And he's he's like, okay, I found one more storage facility and I don't know what's in this yet, but I thought you'd want to look. And he he pushes it over and dramatically flips the trunk lid open and it's full of clothing. Mm. All sorts of clothing, different colors, different cloth. It's just like a riot in there. I don't remember hmm. seeing any sign of Doug on the crew, so I doubt any of that's going to fit. Well, I might not have been our costumer on on the uh, team of the Flying Alorix, but I am very good with a needle. Okay, so I'm mostly good with a needle. As long as you don't look too closely. I could probably whip something up for you. And he, he does that thing where you lean in and you're just half into the thing. He's throwing things around, digging and rifling. <laughs> Could I get a one red, one purple perception check off of Hillary? I mean, you certainly could. I you mean, if looking. our wonderful friend Koba wanted to also get in on that, I would not say no. Is this just to search the trunk? Yeah. If you're oh, going no, to no. search the trunk. <laughs> he's, All right. he's currently gauging the amount of disrepair that some blaster pistol he found is in. Fair enough. Okay, okay, I'll get Hillary's check, and then I'll get Koba's check. Okay. You said perception? Yes. It could be worse. Could be better. I mean, I know exactly what's happening with the despair if and when it happens. Can I have a blue because I'm actually in it? <laughs> okay, I'm rolling, I'm rolling. Yeah, I'm rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, baby. All dice have canceled out. I'm figuring that you get upended, and as you're searching for things, uh, you get a bit upended. I don't know, you s- step on one of the tumblers outfits that are in there, and it, the outside of it, is pretty slick on itself so it slides very easily and your barefooted foot does not claw in as you fall into the trunk which is big enough to close over you 
You reach up and grab at whatever you can. Your right hand catches the what looks to be padded on the top. You catch it, you try and yank and keep yourself out. What happens is is the internal liner falls down and the lid is still open, but the liner for the lid is now down on top of Hillary. <laughs> so I'm thrown into darkness, but I'm not stuck. Exactly. You're not stuck. It's not actually closed. It's just now there is definitely a thing. Well, I didn't see that coming. Koba? Could you could you lend a hand? Koba? Please? <sighs> Koba puts the blaster he was looking at down and <laughs> saunters over to the box. As Koba is looking at the box and I'm assuming trying to get in there with Koba's feet to get the liner for the lid out, Koba sees right in front of their face on the lid that they can now see what looks to be a pretty classic ringmaster's outfit with a very thick collar that is sized for a smaller person. What the heck kind of trunk do we find on this ship? Who were (laughs) they stealing from? (laughs) And shortly after Koba pulling the lid out, Hillary pushing up, there's Hillary now just sort of standing knee deep in clothing inside this trunk. So would would you consider yourself more of an autumn? I found this lovely piece here. <laughs> he holds up some ridiculously shiny purple thing. I what do you think? I don't think I'm an autumn. What do you have there? Is this what you'd like? I could probably it, tailor it. No, no, it it's Struck me as your style. Ooh. Ooh. Very interesting. He shrugs it on. It's not the right shape, but, you know, he pulls at the lapels and he's like, oh, it's not too big. It's not too big. Hmm. What's this? There's a button here. There's a button here. What does the button do? Clicks it on. Oh. It's a microphone! Hello, Koba! At which point, yeah, it's now amplified fairly significantly. Almost like they'd be talking into a microphone in the middle of, like, a ring barker's getup. I'm right here. Could we not use the microphone? Oh, beg pardon. It was was just a discovery. I I will... I will... I'll even... I'll even just... We'll just turn it... We'll just turn it right off. Good to know, though. Good to know. How goes that stuff? (laughs) We've got a few blasters that are working well enough. A few others that could be uh, cut back into shape if need be, but this will do for the moment. Whenever you're done uh, doing that, <laughs> uh, there's a few preparations I want to make sure we make before we get to Catanomoidia. It's a good plan. It's a good plan. I will let you do your thing, and I'll just, I'll just push this back to my, to my cabin. Okay. No, no, okay. The preparations involve you and Skip. Oh. Oh, well, I'll still start by this, and once we're settled into hyperspace, we'll get Skip back out here. All right. Koba goes back to the table, back to the the blasters, and you just hear this horrible noise as Hillary very slowly pushes it down the hall to one side, swings it wide to get in the door, through the door... And eventually it stops. I'm just sort of thinking, like, as Hillary's trying to get over the hatch lip that would be going into the uh, quarters, that it would get jostled and Hillary would then finally find the repulsors on the bottom of the crate. Oh. Oh. Well, that would have made this easier, huh? 
Yes, much. Into the room. Call me when you're ready. And since Koba is going over the weaponry, could I get a... This one's just going to be an easy range light. All right. Since you're doing basic maintenance on a bunch of blasters. Oh, two successes, one advantage, and a triumph. Well, I, I think you might have found something <clears throat> usable. I think you found something. I think you found a couple of usable ones. What would you want to use the triumph on? I have no idea. A bigger revolver. I don't Where? actually want the blasters. I just need them for other people. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some fun ammunition? Uh, let me see. Let me see. A vibro rang. Yeah, third yes, vibro rang. This is perfect. <laughs> uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe a mod. Mm. Yeah. I, I know that we're dealing with blasters here, but you're looking at weaponry. A grenade, maybe something went off that could be of some use to you. Yeah. Oh no, not not something that went off. <laughs> well, yeah. Because <laughs> do we do we have yeah. any weapons that can be modded? Uh, I actually don't remember about the Fiverr. I mean, there's not a ton of slug thrower mods anyway, but there's a uh, few. Fairness. I mean, if you're wanting that or a more esoteric kind of weapon, that also would work. I feel pretty okay about weapons myself. If anybody else wants something esoteric, I'm happy to find that. <laughs> Preferably something that requires ranged light. I don't think... I need anything. I was actually going to have Cash stop carrying the blaster after what happened with their vision. <laughs> like there's, if I was doing it, it would totally be an SE14R light repeater, but that's just me. That sounds very impressive. I have no idea what it is. It's a newsy. <clears throat> oh, okay. If, if nobody has like, like a particularly like good weapon or something they want to, they want to toss out. I, I think the better way to go might be a one-off. As... Koba's looking at taking apart the pistols, cleaning them, making sure that they've got full gas canisters, full power packs, all that sort of fun stuff. Reassembling them, putting them just slightly further on the Dejaric table, going on to the next one, cleaning it, making sure that's good. The last one that Koba picks up, Koba just sort of smiles at and starts making sure that's functional. I'm thinking then we serve sort of Iris in. After Kesh takes off with Box Ward, Skip will, you know, finish programming in the destination, etc., etc., and then wander back to the uh, the crew quarters, of which there are there are a number of different rooms of crew quarters in this ship. And as Koba has decided to hammock it up in storage, that means there should be one of the rooms that is unoccupied. Is that correct? Yes. Then uh, whichever room has not been occupied, Skip is going to sort of take a look. And according to the document you gave us, it kind of looks like there's a number of bunks in there. Yes. Are they like bunk beds? I am figuring that, yeah, they pretty much are bunk beds. The ship itself was set up so that it could travel a number of passengers on top of the crew, and the crew essentially had one of the rooms, and the other two were set up for about eight or so passengers between the two, so both sides of the walls have bunk beds. Then, so Skip is going to reach into their backpack and pull out some tools, make an appraising sort of glance at these bunk beds and then start going to town, dismantling them and then reassembling them so that they form more of a sort of giant bed cave rather than a number of bunk beds. In the process, I like to think that Skip starts narrating chapter one of this adventure to themselves. And Gudge, uh, because Skip is going to start journaling, essentially. Is it possible, actually, that I could find uh, the hollow recorder you mentioned in this room? Yeah. 
as I'm dismantling beds and things. Yeah, that totally makes sense. That you're taking apart the beds and like between one of the mattresses and whatever's underneath it, you pull the mattress off and there is this hollow recorder that is there. And it's got space for a good, I don't know, 200 more entries. Though it says that there's 25 currently on it. Oh, I'm just trying to think of how like callous it would be for Skip to just be like, eh, erase all previous entries. Skip is dismantling the bunk beds in this in this room and finds the, the hollow recorder. Oh. Neat. Hey, Gudge, I have an idea. And he's going to hit the record button. And while Skip is continuing to assemble this uh, bed cave, then sort of recount the Skip version of our queen. And that's, that's going to take quite some time, so... Also, Skip does not care about audio quality, apparently, because there's just going to be, like, tool-banging noises in this recording. You know, Skip's editor is going to have a really hard time doing noise reduction. The Skip Chronicles, Volume 1. Arboween. Every now and then, Skip does look up, at, like, during a particular part of the story that requires a lot of really, like, emphatic gesturing, and will make, you know, hand motions and things. <laughs> It is very, very important that when you're sleeping, you do not leave the enemies, you know, I don't know if there's any enemies around, any chance to either wake you up or stab you in your sleep, so it's really much safer to sleep in a cave. And ships generally are not very well equipped to handle caves, so you kind of generally have to make one yourself. This is all to say, Skip is building a bed cave, and I have a new journal, so I'm going to be writing Skip clubs. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> Support it. to them, yes. On both parts. That's amazing. <laughs> Hillary has gotten the the trunk into his room and he's shut the door and he's engaged the lock and has gone through all of the context. Basically, if you walked into this room right now, which you couldn't because the door is locked, it would look like the trunk had thrown up everywhere because he's got everything hanging, dangling, spread out. There's a table in a corner and he's found a, a sewing kit to go with all of this nonsense. Or maybe he carries one. But he takes off his pendant that he's been wearing this whole time and sets it aside and just gives it a little twist. And a little hollow recording pops up and it's just cycling through little clips from the flying Aloryx, shots of the kids, shots of Alicia. And there's, you know, music that he's he's singing along with now and again. And he's just started to sort the clothing into piles and just figuring something out for himself, not really paying attention, just throwing himself into his own quiet project. Awesome. So we cut over to Takesha's room where she has uh, cleared a space on the floor and sets the holocron of Sojo Ward down before sitting cross-legged down beside it. Skip mentioned you learned a few things since we added that other crystal. I would like to continue my training. Absolutely, Padawan Kesh. I look forward to exploring these memories with you. Now, as you look... And then I suppose Koba is um, bundling off the blasters towards one of the cargo bays, probably the one he is not sleeping in. This makes sense. And starts to um, rearrange some things in the cargo bay to make a makeshift uh, training area. There's enough space there to create a short-ish shooting alley and other, like a physical square where you could do like hand-to-hand or whatnot. And then with a camera less looking at Koba. Thank you for listening to this episode of Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can find show updates on Twitter at The Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, on Twitter at Deuterium Ice. I'm on Twitter at Blue of the Kin, and my Star Trek actual play, Endeavor Through the Maelstrom, which uh, includes Christine, is at Endeavor Show. I'm 
Leslie and completely flummoxed by this change in order, but you can find me at GS on Twitter. And you can find me at Twelfth Night. That's one, two, T-H and night with a K. I'm Ren and I'm back where I belong at the end, which is how I started. <laughs> and you can find me at Atomic Firebird or updates on my various projects at Make Believe Info. And we are all at TheHeidianWay.com, where you can find previous episodes. You can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Plus, you can help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing. We are also on Facebook as The Heidian Way. You can holocom us at heroes at TheHeidianWay.com. If you like what we do and you want to support the show, you can find us at Patreon.com slash TheHeidianWay. Or you can send the team some calf at ko-fi.com slash the Heidian way, because none of us are Sothari in real life. As far as we know. <laughs> can't prove anything. No, we can't. But I suspect. I mean, there are pictures right. of most of you, so maybe. But I've technically actually seen also? everyone. A nep wizard. But <laughs> we don't we don't have a we don't have an ascetic in the party. <laughs> uh not yet. Crosspeck now. Yeah, yeah, go get those magical net powers. <laughs> I think I, I might have been responsible I... for the magic net powers in that tree, I forget. <laughs> I I need to write something down. I just realized I have a great question for Hillary down the road. <laughs> oh no. Hey Cash, can I see your notes? What? <laughs> it doesn't have to be to Hillary. <laughs> that was what was last time, I believe. On the no, no, no. Location. I oh, oh, I see. <coughs> yes, no. I was not taking that as instruction. I just, I was prepared for having to intro first. It did not occur to me that I might also have to ask a question. Uh, <coughs> Surprise! Yeah. Uh, I think I thought. Ask, ask Gudge a question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we just don't translate it yeah or i have to answer it as gudge and then at the end we just throw in the work and it's uh, that's all the uh heroes understood yeah <laughs> I, I yield i yield the floor <laughs> <laughs> i reclaim my time <laughs> after after which were he the gm <laughs> they would be fighting um, oh no this uh, Womp Rat has an armored tail with a <laughs> shock, shock glove on the end of it. Yeah, just one of the one of the things we find, one of the found items, is one of us just like opens up a box and it unfolds into a Sith war droid. That's all. <laughs> I mean, oh, that goody. is tempting. That's a thing that can happen. I mean, it would be pretty rad fighting in such close quarters, actually. <laughs> uh, I mean. Okay, just remember, don't punch a hole through the ship that would be bad <laughs> we we are in space i mean that would be a great use of like a despair or two on a blaster shot right yeah it goes it right really through would. the the, the four cockpit <laughs> and then we have to like you know all right no to self. Here i was just thinking of a love yeah. cat showing up and yeah. causing havoc so so there you go ben we've uh we've created your second episode for this uh prelude <laughs> What about Soulja Boy? <laughs> what about not? Oh, no. Anyway, you're asleep. Go away. <laughs> I was out of character. I know. Because you didn't sound like Solid Snake. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, this is Ren flicking out on names. Uh, hold on. Uh, r -r -r -r. Uh, back when we were shags. with yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find the planet, but I can't. Ah, oh, I can't find the planet either in my brain. Mushrooms, yeah. Felicia. Felicia, there oh, we go. Right. Saved by the jam. Weirdly yeah, enough, it was a mushrooms thing. <laughs> Just in light of the conversation. So, so how did you fall to the dark side? Well, I decided to <laughs> lift the <laughs> ground. That was five feet away. I mean, that'd be worth 
that would be definitely getting towards the dark side. That's <laughs> that's what they don't really acknowledge is that like a lot of dark Jedi, the the real reason they fell was laziness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just that, that one beer time from the you fridge. think. <laughs> Man, I wish I could get another soda without actually getting up and going to the kitchen. It's probably okay just this once, and next thing you know, you're very evil. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's 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 those uh, uh, crate dragon plushies in the claw machine. Cash got sick of losing. Look, I really wanted one. It was either that or bash the machine. <laughs> oh, I love a good set of dueling pistols. Not I do, not Hillary. <laughs> They're biscuit baron stable cookies. <laughs> when did they start getting a gand uh, as a mascot? Stable cookies. It's a new development. And why do they now sell them with flames on the package? Those are the cinnamon ones. Jalapeno jelly. <laughs> Oh, wait, was the despair that Hillary falls in and the trunk slams closed? Let's shut the door and see if your world is thrown into darkness. Actually, Hillary yes, does that's not exactly find Narnia. What it was. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as a vibro ring launcher, Christine. <laughs> but there could be. Why, it's a why triumph. wouldn't there and be? You, and you want. Me to have one of those. Is that I mean, I, I'm just just to be clear. That's with, what uh, you're saying. I'm coming up with uh, with great suggestions here. That's, <laughs> that's just trying to help. Every suggestion is gold, Christine. Uh, clearly, uh, a stun glove for a tail is among the blasters. <laughs> <laughs> a stun glove for a Trandoshan tail. It's rare because they didn't sell very well. Because as it turns out, <laughs> there's not really. An audience for it. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing research, that's it. They didn't do their research. Yeah. I did a while ago take some ranks and ranged lights so that I could at some point equip myself with something that was a little less uh, sniper. A little less massive? I mean, especially if we're going to be going into a city situation, I could see where Kobo would maybe <clears throat> hand skip a blaster and be like, this might work better in the city. So, so then, do you have any particular thoughts or feelings on kind of blaster you would want, or just? I do not. I just, uh, I just wanted to cut in and say that so that we didn't just like dispose of all the blasters because I was going to just grab something. But mm -hmm. yeah. that sounds like a good, good direction to go with. Then, uh... if you've got any other ideas, like finding a couple just base blaster pistols, and then something else with a triumph, totally cool. Yeah. Maybe he found somebody's uh, wallet <laughs> and suddenly we have credits. Yeah, but I, I feel like that needs to be a problem when we get where we're going. I mean, that's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm going to look through here real quick okay. I, uh, and, and see if I can find a, a good, a cool blaster or something for, for you for your end. The CS-14 Ghost Light Blaster is hard to find. Also sounds cool. It's also legal. I, I don't think I've heard of this. Thing. It's from Cyber's oh, Masks. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, sensor proof. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, like that's, it's not very that's... damaging, but it's very yeah. Well, it's a light pistol, find. but it does. Yeah. I mean, that would work, and it would make sense given where we are. Yep, yeah. and it would most certainly be functioning. Totally. Okay, I mean, I'm game for that. If nobody else has any, uh, I was just starting to look, so uh, I don't have another thought right now. Koba finds. Oh, look at this! This is a very interesting piece. I will set it aside for the future. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we want to do it that way and then decide, like, between episodes, sure. Let's do it that way, though. I do kind of want to get, like, Koba saying, huh, this is interesting, or something like that. Just so they can cut in and... I mean, that... A CS-14 Ghost Light Blaster Pistol. That can come later, because what I want to do with having a few blasters on hand is Koba is concerned about making sure that Skip and Hillary can fight. So there's going to be a class. I gotcha. love it. I <clears throat> love it. And it super doesn't really matter what the weapons are for that. So glad I don't know names of any tools. What do you 
do with bolts? How do you take bolts out of a wall? Is that a wrench? Some sort of, you know. Uh, or like a ratchet. It's Star Wars. It's a hydro spanner. Okay. Pretty much how that I works. I mean, Leslie's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's maybe a little... Maybe that would hurt Leslie's heart a little too much. There's just a vital... Um, there's a, a folder called Vital Logs about Soljo Ward and Skip just drags <laughs> it to the recycle bin and... <clears throat> All right. So inventory yeah, so. and worth of all yeah, ship contents. Jedi secrets. <laughs> so, yes. Darth so. Plagueis. <laughs> it's a hollow recorder, so it's also recording video, isn't it? It oh, can, no. yes. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> oh, no. So it's just skip pounding away and Gudge doing circles and period- periodically commenting. Every now and then, Skip does look up. I'd like during a particular part of the story that requires a lot of really like emphatic gesturing, and will make you know hand motions and things. <laughs> In the distant future, after Skip has become a legendary hero, renowned for being the protagonist of this adventure, and also all the other adventures that they go on after this adventure and so forth some some young Jedi children are going to be like having to watch these things as as part of their training and it's just you know a hollow of skip putting some beds together uh the thing that set kylo ren over the edge yeah <laughs> is very important small small jedi completely looks at teacher teacher are you sure this is a jedi <laughs> well clank, it's clank, very clank. very important that when you're sleeping you do not leave the enemies you know i don't know if there's any enemies around any chance to either wake you up or stab you in your sleep, so it's really much safer to sleep in a cave. And ships generally are not very well equipped to handle caves, so you kind of generally have to make one yourself. Building a bed cave is one of the Jedi trials in the future. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm scared of closed-in places. This is all to say, Skip is building a bed cave, and I have a new journal, so I'm going to be writing the Skip Clubs. And I'm done. Support it. Look forward to them. Yes, on both parts. <laughs> amazing. 